tonight, eternal weight of glory. Eternal weight of glory. And you know, that's actually what it's all about. An eternal weight of glory. Charles Spurgeon said, Renouncing the scrap metal of this world in order to have the gold and silver treasures of Christ is such an amazing good trade-off that it must be done with joy. Mm -hmm. Amen. Amen. When we decided to renounce the scrap metal of this world, we were in fact declaring war yeah. on those desires for lesser things, the scrap metal. Amen. And when you can see that actually what you've done is you've declared war on these lesser things, yes. and then you, then, you, then you can see what, you, what you've got ahead of you. And it, you'll understand it's like an enemy that never quits fighting the scrap metal to get your attention. Mm -hmm. It's an enemy that's always present and you're always having to fight against. Mm -hmm. So your initial decision to, de to declare war on, 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 on the scrap metal, on the lesser things of this world, is something that has to be uh, a continuous thing. Mm -hmm. And this ongoing conflict and struggle to obtain the treasures of Christ mm -hmm. will bring all kinds of opportunities, my brethren, for difficulties and occasions for suffering into our lives. Troubles, afflictions, difficulties, hard times. Well, we should look to God to remove them. But we can look to God to help us to get through them. Amen. That's the objective. Amen. The reality of sin and suffering, it does exist. That's a fact. And we avoid the sin, and we still suffer a lot of the times. Mm -hmm. yeah. We suffer the conflict itself. We suffer through the conflict of sin and suffering. But you know, we add, even though we do suffer in the conflict, we do not suffer as the ungodly do. That's right. Yeah. That's right. We yeah. suffer for righteousness. Mm -hmm. yeah. And if we suffer for righteousness, it's profitable mm -hmm. for you. Mm -hmm. The immediate profit, of course, is the immediate results is we, we have a joy. And then ultimately, we're working and, and for a crown of righteousness. So it is profitable when we suffer under righteousness. The conflict is profitable and is a guarantee because we're working out of salvation based on not on our righteousness, mm -hmm. but on the righteousness of Jesus Christ. So it's, it's a done deal for you. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And this is good news. Since, since in the ordinariness of trials, which are common to God's elect, yeah. we are subject to grow weary and to faint. So oftentimes we can look back to this it's a refuge. Philippians 1.29, it says, For unto you it is given in the behalf of Christ, not only to believe on Him, but also to suffer for His sake. Having the same conflict which you saw in me, and even now here to be in me, Paul writes. Now, if we were to take a moment and define suffering, it would be anything we have to endure, or anything we have to put up with, or anything we have to tolerate, that suffering. That can range anywhere from mental anguish, emotional anxiety, spiritual unrest, mm -hmm. or to that of being beaten, ridiculed, burned at the stake, or nailed on a cross. Mm -hmm. This is all sufferings mm -hmm. that our brethren have to go through. We know why the apostles and others like them suffered. It's just for the same reason we do. Mm -hmm. It's called discipleship. It's renouncing the scrap metal of this world. Mm -hmm. Yeah. And our Lord, uh, He was to the point about how we would be treated by this world for our decisions to follow Him. He says, He that loveth his life shall lose it, and he that hateth his life in this world shall keep it unto eternal life. Mm -hmm. Discipleship calls us to live in this world with the mindset of a pilgrim mm -hmm. and at the same time as one who does originate from the earth. I mean, the flesh, it does belong here. It does originate from the world, and it belongs to it. And the spirit, which is the new man, is the pilgrim who is passing through and doesn't belong here. Yeah. If you're not clear about being born again, then read what Jesus told Nicodemus in John 3.3. 3. Mm -hmm. This right here, this conflict between the pilgrim passing through and the flesh who belongs here is the initial and uh, conflict that a person experiences 
from the very outset. It is the precursor or the starting place for all the other conflicts and struggles that a person will have throughout his life. It's got to start there. That's right. Amen. Uh, the way we personally experience this is different for everybody. Mm -hmm. It's all different. But the, the pilgrim mentality uh, must exist in all of us. Mm -hmm. Or we miss fellowship, period. Uh -huh. It begins with a personal conflict. If we, if we've already spoken about this today. We, and it's hard to get up here and preach about the gospel if we don't talk about it. It's a, it's a fundamental issue. But if you're not experiencing that conflict between the old man and the new man, then uh, we, you need to re-examine what's happened to the conflict. Uh, because it doesn't begin here. I mean, it doesn't end here. It begins here. So in the very beginning, let me lay this before you. We have no fellowship with Christ when there is none of this conflict or this opposition taking place in us that we, we just discussed. Amen. And the point of confirmation, now this can be a point of confirmation to you. If you're experiencing an inner conflict mm -hmm. of which Paul calls in Romans 7, mm -hmm. the warring of the members mm -hmm. in, in Romans 7, if you're experiencing that, then you, that's, a, that's a confirmation to you. Amen. Jesus says, mm -hmm. rejoice in this. Mm -hmm. Paul says rejoice. James says consider it pure joy. And Peter says, If any man suffer as a Christian, let him not be ashamed, but let him glorify God on his behalf. Amen. Amen. Our text of Scripture that Brother Judah read for us, as you know, is from Colossians. It's written by Paul. Who now rejoice in my suffering for you, and I fill up that which is behind of the afflictions of Christ in my flesh for his body's sake, which is the church. Now, if I was limited to the one verse to kind of like sum up Paul or encapsulate the life of Paul, if I was like, you got one verse, do it. The top, one of the top three would be Philippians 3.14, which says, I press toward the mark for the prize of the high calling of God in Christ Jesus. That's some kind of like, you know, you think of Paul. Uh, now, only Paul could say, who now rejoice? Yeah. And my sufferings for you. This is a man who is pressing toward a mark. Mm -hmm. Who can say this? Amen. Christ Jesus is calling Paul upward. Mm -hmm. That's what he's doing. And Paul has responded to this call to come up higher with the outstretched arms. Mm -hmm. Paul is extending himself mm -hmm. to obtain a reward and a prize. Amen. And that prize is ever being present with our Lord. Paul understands this. To meet, to press means to run after or to run toward. He presses toward the mark or the goal, or to the finish for prize, the high call of God. Mm -hmm. And it's beckoning him upward, constantly, continuously. Yeah. He can yeah. see the prize, but it's always upward. It's always until he finally gets there. Mm -hmm. Paul says, it's a prize, not only to me, but in 2 Timothy 4.8 he says, but unto all them also 